Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about going vegan. Giving up is a difficult concept to grasp, especially when it comes to eating. I'm not a believer in hippie health food, but decent nutrition is important. As a result, I've always been puzzled as to what this new vegan craze is all about. To be honest, the World Health Organization's recent announcement that processed beef is carcinogenic made me a little concerned. A research published a few years ago found that a kind of iron found in red meat can raise the risk of heart disease. These findings have made me wonder if it's past time for carnivores and vegans to get along. Going vegan for animal welfare is a well-worn path. It's certainly gone glam, with superstars like Beyoncé, Carrie Underwood, and Brad Pitt adopting a vegan diet. Their curves will inform you that they are vegan for weight reduction. This is understandable given the Western diet's high sugar, processed meat, and refined cereal content. When you become vegan, you reduce saturated fats and cholesterol while increasing fiber from fruits and vegetables, while also ingesting less calories. However, a vegan approach can provide a lot more, adds Dr. Rupalida. What distinguishes it from being a vegetarian? Plant-based foods, such as vegetables, grains, nuts, and fruits, make up the majority of a vegan's diet. Vegans avoid eating meat, honey, eggs, milk, and dairy products since they are derived from animals. This distinguishes it from vegetarians who can eat everything but meat. Veganism starts with vegetarianism and takes it through to its natural conclusion, writes American dietitian Jack Norris in his book, Vegan Life. Veganism is more than simply a dietary change. It's also a philosophical, ethical, and moral position. According to holistic health coach Nandini Gilati, vegans avoid utilizing animal products for food, clothing, and amusement. Vegans and professionals share their thoughts. Veganism, as well as antioxidants, fiber, and micronutrients, are popular right now. You've probably heard about the importance of these nutrients in your diet by now. These chemicals are abundant in the vegan diet and are necessary for well-being and vigor. Those who eat a lot of animal products may be deficient in these nutrients, Dr. Dad adds. You may be concerned about protein deficiency and other deficiencies that vegans may experience, such as iron and B12, which are primarily derived from animal products. But Dr. Data clarifies, meats are a complete source of protein, meaning that they contain all essential amino acids that your body requires. Combining grains and pulses, on the other hand, provides complete proteins. Both amino acid profiles complement each other, resulting in a complete protein that is as excellent as meat. Whey protein, in fact, is better to egg protein. Another approach to increase the quality of protein in vegetarian meals is to sprout or ferment them. Vegans may not receive enough B12. Under the supervision of your doctor, you may rely on dietary supplements to satisfy your needs during stressful times. However, this is also true for vegetarians. Furthermore, whether they consume meat or not, a big portion of our population is deficient in protein and iron, she says. What about calcium from milk, which is said to be an absolute necessity for growth and development? In this regard, Miyu Nade Schwarin, who arranges culinary courses, brought out some intriguing facts. After the age of three, our bodies cease absorbing casein, protein from milk, so we don't actually need it. Because it is acidic, it leaches calcium from the body and is more prone to causing inflammation. According to statistics, nations that eat the most milk have the largest number of instances of osteoporosis. Sesame seeds, which are largely neglected in our diet, have the largest quantity of calcium, adds Menu. On his website, Chris Kresser, a globally recognized leader in the fields of ancestral health, explains that dairy products are acidic in nature and that to maintain a normal blood pH, alkaline minerals such as calcium from the bones are used, resulting in decreased bone density and an increased risk of osteoporosis. I could see both sides of the argument. The world's most flourishing communities, from Pakistan's Hunza tribe, where women don't reach menopause until they're 6 to 5, to Japan's Okinawa diet, where individuals are more likely to live to be 100. Grain, nuts, soy, and seeds are the mainstays. Dairy products are not mentioned, and for good reason. 
the meat and dairy sectors are the most polluting. We're not only eating far more growth hormones and antibiotics than is safe, but we're also being influenced by stress hormones released by these animals when they're butchered for meat or milk. Why are we consuming another species' milk in defying nature when no other creature in the food chain is doing so? Take a look at our forefathers' diets. They ate primarily raw foods, yet got all of their nourishment and lived longer lives. Didn't they? Me, you asks. PETA has been at odds with the dairy business for a long time. They showed what happens behind the scenes in one of their videos. Cows usually lactate for 10 months after birth before being re-inseminated. It goes on until they are able to reproduce, at which point they are taken to the slaughterhouse. The calves are removed the same day and fed milk substitutes, which may include cattle blood. Like their moms, they grow up to become milking machines. Cow's milk, they claim, is a cruel and harmful product, since the natural cycle is disrupted. On the other hand, while Dr. Data does not advocate eliminating milk from the diet, he does believe that the nutrients found in milk may be obtained from other, better sources. When Mimi was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes four years ago, she went vegan. Healthier options can provide the same nutrition. When you look at the animals we eat, you'll notice that they obtain their nutrition from plants as well. Compared to meat eaters, vegetarians tend to consume less saturated fat and cholesterol and more vitamin C and E, dietary fiber, folic acid, potassium, magnesium, and phytochemicals, plant compounds, such as carotenoids and flavonoids, according to Harvard Health. As a consequence, they're more likely to have lower total and LDL, or bad cholesterol, blood pressure, and BMI, all of which are linked to longer life and a decreased risk of numerous chronic illnesses. The fact that so many people who have chosen to live a vegan lifestyle have chosen to remain vegan speaks for itself. Alicia Silverstone, star of the film Clueless, used to suffer from asthma, sleeplessness, acne, and bloating, but she claims she has never felt better since being vegan. Veganism, in my opinion, is not simply another trendy diet. It's a lifestyle change, a decision you make on your own. It's also a return to your origins. A lot of our old foods have been ignored for a long time, from grains like amaranth to spices like ketchup haldi. Today's diet consists primarily of readily available foods, and we consume far more than we require. According to Menu, a vegan diet forces you to eat smaller quantities of local, seasonal, and healthier vegetables. Vegan diets are healthy for all phases of life, according to both the British and American Dietetic Associations, as long as they are well-planned. You won't be able to consume what you're eating right now if you don't include meat you'll feel depleted and starved. Your meals should be well-balanced, with appropriate amounts of all nutrients and main dietary groups. If you're feeling motivated to go green, do it. That's all for this video, and we really hope you learned something new today from the video. If you did, tell us down in the comment section. It makes us feel good and motivates our team. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe if you already have not and like the video. It takes five seconds of your time but each and every one of you means a lot to us. Until next time, bye.